Hello everyone, my name is Nikos Gazetas and I am a graphic designer and uh, Adobe Certified Instructor for Photoshop and on behalf of Academy Class I'm going to show you today how to retouch your portrait photos and uh, we're going to see some uh, great techniques but uh, before we start with that I would like to show you how the retouching tools of Photoshop work and before I even go and select my tool I need to create a new layer to create a new layer I'm going to go on my layers panel and click on the uh, create, new create a new layer icon and I have layer 1 and I'm going to work on layer 1 and the retouching tools of Photoshop uh, are here the first one is uh, called Spot Healing Brush and I'm going to zoom in to show you exactly how this tool works uh, the, the tool uses a brush this round cursor that you can see on my screen uh, with which I go on the spot that I want to remove and just click and the spot has been removed of course for this to work I need to have my sample layers option checked on my control panel and I can continue removing spots easily without any problem ah, this works well with uh, smaller areas if uh, we have though an area like this one like this here when I try to remove it, as you can see, the result isn't as uh, good as I would uh, want it to be. So it, this is not uh, the tool that I would be using for this situation. I will undo that, okay? And I would prefer another tool, which is called Healing Brush Tool. The Healing Brush Tool is a uh, pretty similar to the clone stamp tool and with which I need to sample areas of uh, my photo and uh, clone on other areas of the photo. Uh, the healing brush tool doesn't exactly clone, what it does is uh, usually heals. What does that mean? It means that uh, I have uh, the two areas, the one that already existed and the, the one that I'm going uh, to clone and blend them together this is what the tool does blends uh, two areas together to make a final uh, outcome now uh, before I start uh, sampling I need to make sure that the sample option is for current below not all layers not current layer if I have current layer what I'm going to do is try uh, to sample from uh, an empty layer that doesn't have any pixels so the outcome will be nothing and this is how I this is why I prefer current below I alt click and sample and then go to the area that needs healing and heal it as you can see now the result is much much better than before this is what I'm going to do with small wrinkles on her forehead some areas here but let's see what's going to happen if I would uh, try to do it in this area As you can see, by doing uh, what I did before, the result isn't uh, the best because I'm cloning from this area and I'm trying to blend with this area and the result isn't that good. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, the third tool that I would like to show you today is the patch tool, which is mainly uh, used 
for larger areas like this one and uh, I could try and circle and select uh, this area but uh, as you can see on my control panel I do not have a selection that allows me uh, to use some uh, other layer the other than uh, the one I'm already on so with uh, layer 1 selected I cannot use it what I need to do is create uh, a copy of my background so I'll press command J on my Mac that would be control J on a PC and I have a background copy now which I'm selecting this area and I will drag it down over an area that does have a problem and this area is going to be my sample I let go and this is what happens again uh, the two areas are being uh, blended and they give me one final outcome uh, if you believe that the outcome is too intense we do have uh, the option of fading down a little bit this option is on, I, on my edit menu fade patch selection and I'm taking the opacity of this slider a little bit lower this is a better result it seems a little bit more realistic and I can click OK right now then I'm going to deselect by going to select and deselect or pressing command D on my Mac or control D on a PC and I'm just going to do it over again on the other under the other eye same here edit fade path selection lowering the opacity to 60% click OK and deselect again uh, this could be a good result but I'm not too excited about that and uh, as you can see the Photoshop tool for uh, retouching are good but they work great under uh, specific circumstances what I want to do I want to retouch a photo under any circumstances and have great results and the way to do that I'm going to show you uh, right away now I'm going to clear these layers I'm going to delete them and start over again before I start I need to create two copies of my background because I'm going uh, to use a technique that's called frequency separation and frequency separation allows me uh, to separate my photo into two uh, different layers one that can uh, have all the tone and uh, color and the other one uh, containing all the detail of my photo let's see how we are going to do that to create the copies again I will press command J twice and then I'm going to rename my layer 1 I'm going to call it low for the low frequency and my layer 1 copy I'm going to name high for my high frequency the high frequency is going to be the layer that contains all my detail and the low layer is going to contain the tone and color of uh, my photo now I have selected my low layer and I'm going to the filter menu choosing blur and Gaussian blur now, what I'm trying to do now is uh, make it blurry 
until I do not see any details on the face, the eyes or her lips. I, I think about this 6.8 I think it's a good result. I click OK. Now this is my low layer, the one that will contain the tone and color. Now, I'm uh, revealing again my high layer, selecting it. And now I'm going to go to the image menu and apply image. And uh, what I need to do now is uh, make sure that I have the right settings. The right settings when I use an 8-bit image and I have an 8-bit image as you can see here. The settings are these. I need uh, to select uh, my low layer here. Of course the composite channel, the RGB channel and the uh, blending mode is going to be subtract opacity of 100% scale to offset 128 and then I'm going to click OK now these uh, settings that uh, I just told you are different when we are using a 16-bit image and I'm going to show you exactly what uh, the correct settings are and these are the settings uh, for both for 8-bit color depth and 16 color depth and you can pause the video and uh, write them down if you'd like I'll leave it just for a second to, for you to see okay and then I'm going back to my uh, photo the result for my high layer is this one of course I do not want to have a gray layer like this I do not know how to use it what I do know is uh, that I need to change the blending mode to linear light all the all those blending modes that you can see here this uh, blending mode group what it does it usually uh, makes more contrast gives more contrast to our photos each one with a different way but uh, by doing that I mean that it takes the lighter tones uh, it makes them even more lighter and the, ha uh, the dark tones even darker what will happen now though uh, in this case linear light and all these ignore uh, mid grays this is the gray that we have here is a mid gray so when I use linear light this gray disappears okay what I need to do now is start working on my retouch first I'm going to go on my low layer hide my high layer once again and I'm going to even out all areas that uh, have uh, some detail that I do not want to have low layer I'm selecting uh, my lasso tool and use a feather of 15 pixels that will be uh, that will make uh, my selection a little bit softer at the edges and I'm selecting areas that I want to remove and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and as you can see everything has been evened out I click OK now as uh, I'm going to do that quite a lot I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut which is uh, command F to redo my last applied uh, filter and I will select here even out 
here, 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 and I'm just selecting areas and make them making them uh, even out. These areas too, small spots on the screen. And I'm evening, evening out this part too. Command F or Control F my PC. I'm going this area. I'm just uh, applying the Gaussian blur filter again. And now uh, the hard part starts because uh, this area is very very uh, difficult because uh, she has a lot of hair on her arm and just uh, remember this is not a fashion shoot uh, she's just someone that needs her portrait taken and this is why uh, we need to do uh, all this uh, retouching on her arm and as you can see I'm selecting and I'm going to apply again my last filter which goes in blur command F I'll press it once again until I do not see any uh, bad areas I'm deselecting and I'll go on with her other arm selecting Command F and here Command F go down the this area too and this is most of the work that we need to do on our low layer but remember that as long as it is a, a single layer I can always come back and uh, redo everything and do some more things if I need to like here or here and now I'll go on with my high layer I'm, I'm making it visible and now on my high layer, I'm going uh, to start using my healing brush tool, the one that I need to sample before I use. I hold click. Oh, sorry, that went wrong. Why did that go wrong? Because now I do not need uh, to work on uh, current below. Here, I just need to work on my current layer. I need to work just on my high layer. I do not need to sample anything else from the layers that are below. And as you can see now, the result is much better. By selecting, uh, by taking samples from the areas and cloning them, I can work with the uh, much more precision and have greater results as you can see this hair went away uh, without me having any problems again I'm just going on her forehead removing areas that might have a problem Now, as you can see, her skin has uh, some deep pores that I need, uh, not exactly, I don't need to make them disappear, I just need them to be uh, not so deep, uh, and I want her to keep uh, the, true, the true looks of her face, I don't want my result to be uh, fake, 
I don't want her to appear like uh, she's a mannequin or something. She's just a regular woman that I'm just making her a little bit better. I'm improving her skin quality. And as you can see, it appears to be realistic, it's not fake. I'm going on her nose too. This technique uh, isn't uh, hard, but it needs a little time. You should know by now that if you want good results, you need to spend some time on your images. And this kind of retouching is no exception to that. Now, as you can see, I'm old clicking all the time and taking uh, samples over and over again because I do not want uh, a pattern to appear in my photo and as you can see this is much better than the way it was earlier now I'm going to make my bust a little bigger and go on with this area I will, I will not go uh, just uh, under her eye Right now, I'll do that later. I'm removing all the skin's uh, pores, the, the deep pores, and I'm trying to make it a little bit better. As I said, I don't want the skin to appear like uh, as it is uh, plastic, I just need it to be a little bit clear Going back here, I'm going to remove this small wrinkle. Now, uh, I'm going to address uh, the problem of uh, under her eyes. Right now, I'm just going to click again, sample, and remove all this bad uh, skin and pores that so intense. Okay, now I'm going to do the same to the other eye. Let's see a before and after comparison and I'm going to do that by just alt clicking on my background layer so I can hide all the other layers and this is where we started from and this is uh, what uh, we have done until now as you can see uh, it's a big difference 
I need to go up on record again. Just minor editing here again. Okay, now I'm going to go on her arm. Oh, what we can see here, we have some uh, stray hair that we need to remove. Alt click, sample, and do that. Do it again. I'm just clicking and removing all this detail from my high layer eventually th this is what we are doing we are removing all the detail that we do not need from my hi our high layer and everything appears much much better small spots here I won't uh, bother uh, re uh, removing this here because I'm going to remove uh, later when we're going to change the background and you'll see how we're going to do that now uh, for the difficult part of our touching we have some baby hair here. I'm going to remove the same way. They are not uh, really difficult to remove because they are white and uh, they are not uh, so intense on the skin. They do not have uh, that much contrast. detail that I do not want okay difficult part now uh, this is the most difficult part because we have a lot of black hair on her skin that we need to remove but we are going to do it slowly and carefully so that we do not have any problems and removing try to remove as much uh, as I can if something like that happens just undo and try to be more careful As you can see, her, her skin turns real nice. It appears to be soft and clean. And I think that we've managed to keep it appear uh, real and not fake. I'm removing. What I need to specify now is uh, that this isn't the way of retouching a photo, it's just a way. There are other ways that we can use to retouch a photo, maybe on uh, some uh, higher end images we would uh, change some of our ways. But right now for this image, this photo, we are going to do the best we can with this. Uh, technique and I think it works just fine now I need to make 
a little smaller to remove this this hair from that are close to the edge near the edge I won't remove the hair that are outside uh, her arm right now I'm going to address that later and I have to be really careful here and sometimes our uh, healing pastel doesn't work very well when uh, we are near an edge so I would suggest that you would uh, change the tool and use the clone stamp tool and this is what I'm going to do in a little bit I'm just removing everything again from this part my photo and I'm going to remove this line this on her wrist and now here and these little lines okay I make her pores a little lighter not that deep Now, for the areas that are near an edge, let's say like here, which is uh, near her bracelet, I'm going to choose my clone stamp tool and try to copy and clone really carefully. And again, this thing happens. Why does that happen? Because we are still on a current below mode and I need to select just the current layer because I'm working just on my high layer high sir the high separation the high frequency layer Just change the hardness of my brush, make it a little bit harder. Now. now, what we need to do is go back on our low layer and uh, make this a little bit uh, harder too because it contains uh, it's a little bit blurry and I do not uh, want it to be that blurry so I'm going to make my hardness go down a little bit and I'm clicking and removing I'm cloning right now I'm going to do the same here maybe with just a little bit lower opacity, let's say 50%. Cloning, removing, and let's see what's going on now. Ah, as you can see, it's much better than before. We have removed all this blurriness, and things are going just fine. Okay, again. My high layer, I'm going uh, on her other arm. I'm choosing my healing grass tool again. Hold click, sample, and then apply. And again, just removing all that hair and 
as I said before, this is not a difficult technique, but it needs some time, so be patient. And hard work needs some time. Nothing can happen instantly if you want to have a great uh, work done. And there are third-party uh, third plugins that we can use, but of course they cost. This is the cheapest way, having uh, using Photoshop, having a great result without spending a penny on any other plugins. Sorry about that. Undo. And I'm going to remove this hair here. It's so easy to remove this hair now. And the skip and the skin just keeps its natural looks. Okay. I won't do anything about this hair. I said before that we're going to remove them later when we are going to remove the background and now let's uh, take a look how uh, our photo was earlier and how we managed to make it I'm alt clicking on my background layer on the eye of my background layer to hide all the other layers I'm going to zoom in for you to see a little bit better hold click this is where we start from and this is where we have uh, taken our photo I think it's a huge difference everything is much better I'm going to show you now on her arms you can see we have removed all the spots and hair and everything looks perfect now uh, what I would uh, need to do to make it even more perfect I will uh, create some more contrast some more depth on her and the way to do that is by using another gray layer uh, which I'm going to create right now I'm going on my uh, create new layer icon but first I'm going to press the alt key on my keyboard so I alt click on the create a new layer this dialog uh, box appears and I will change the blending mode to overlay and when I do that this uh, checkbox appear, appears filled with overlay neutral color 50% gray and as I told you before when I have 50% gray and uh, when I'm using one of these the gray color it doesn't uh, appear it's like it is invisible but we'll see how uh, we're going to use that I'm clicking OK now my layer if I see it how it, uh, it normally is, it's this just a grey layer using the overlay blending mode I make it almost invisible and what I need to do is change some of the pixels making them uh, darker or some other pixels make them uh, lighter and I'm going to do that using the dodge and burn tool I'm going to use the burn tool first and the burn tool and the dodge tool work uh, in a similar fashion like just that the burn tool uh, darkens uh, pixels and the dodge tool lightens pixels and uh, what is amazing about these tools is that I can uh, select which tones I, I need to edit and of course 
I'm going to select my mid tones and have a small exposure. I don't want it to be uh, very high because I need to have more control. And now I'm just going to do this. I'm clicking and adding some shadows on her, making her pop a little bit. here and let's see how we did that as you can see when I turn off uh, the eye of layer 1 I can see the difference and it is pretty significant and on the same layer I could create another one but I'm going to do it on the same layer I'm going to use a dodge tool also using uh, mid tones and uh, lower exposure I'm going to lighten some of the pixels creating even more depth on her As you can see, I have given her a more depth, a lot of more depth, which is nice, I think. And I'm going to go into the details now with uh, my burn tool. I'm going to zoom in, and I'll go just below her uh, lip and darken a little bit, so that I can. Uh, make it appear like it is a little bit uh, fuller and a little bit bigger and I'm going to do this on the sides of her nose to make it appear a little bit thinner and let's see how it goes and how it is and an overall before and after comparison this is how we started and this is what uh, we have done so far great difference and uh, let's say I'm going to do some uh, more retouching of her I need to make uh, her uh, lips a little bit thicker just uh, to appear uh, normal not too much I don't want it to appear as it is uh, fake and I'm going to make her eyes a little bit bigger and uh, the way to do that uh, is by creating a composite merged layer copy a copy of all these layers into one new layer the way to do that is by pressing command alt shift and e and i have that new layer it's called layer 2 now on a pc this keyboard shortcut is going to be Control, Alt, and Shift, and E. Now, I'm going to change the name of this layer. I'm going to call it Composite 1. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and go in my Filters menu and choose Liquify. Liquify is a pretty amazing tool uh, it allows me to do a lot of changes and my favorite tool is this one it's called forward warp tool and what this tool does is actually it uh, makes pixels move I can push pixels and any direction I need first of all I need to make the brush pressure and um, to make sure that the brush pressure is low I don't want the brush pressure to be uh, too high because I need to have the control over the tool so I'm using it just to make 
a little bit a small amount of moving and do that here too as you can see I make small moves and let's see I think this is enough I click OK let's see what has I, what have I done? Okay, that looks okay. And I'm going to make her eyes a little bit bigger. And the way to do that is I'm going to use uh, my lasso tool, and I will change the feather to zero. Sorry, zero. Okay. And I'm going to select around her eye, and then I'm going to make a copy of it just by pressing Command J, a new copy, a, a copy on a new layer. I'm going to select again the composite one, go to the other eye, do the same thing, the exact same thing, select Command J, and I have created a copy of her eye. Uh, of the other eye too. Now I'm going to select layer 2 and I'm going to use free transform. Free transform is under the edit menu and free transform or I can use my keyboard shortcut which is command and T or control and T on a PC and as you can see here on uh, my control panel I can see the width and height in percentage I'm just going to click this uh, chain icon to maintain my aspect ratio and I'm going to make it 105 just 5% bigger I'm going to do the same with the other eye I'm pressing command T for free transform Click on the chain icon 105 and OK. Now, as you can see, what has happened is that uh, we can see the edges of the layers, something that is pretty ugly, but I'm not going to leave it uh, like that. What I'm going to do is create layer mask for both of my layers and using my brush tool and black color I'm going to hide these rough edges oh, sorry I need to have of course a very soft brush to do that and I'm doing it now correctly and everything seems to blend fine and that's it that's how we can make her eyes a little bit bigger and uh, it's much more beautiful now and I would like uh, to change uh, the brightness and the white of her eye because I think it is a little bit dark I will I have already created a path this one which I'm going to uh, turn to a selection by command clicking on the path on uh, my paths panel and then I'm going back on my layers panel I'm going to use my curves adjustment layer clicking on it and just taking my curve a little bit uh, let's say here now you you can see now that we can see the edges again of uh, this layer but I do not need to worry about that I do have uh, a pixel mask but I'm not going to use it uh, 
the way I did before I won't go and paint it black all I'm going to do is press this icon to see the properties of my mask and I'm go just going to feather it a little bit just to make it blend nicely you can see the difference, huge difference and I'm going to change a little bit uh, the contrast on uh, the iris of her eye again I'm going on my paths panel and I'm just clicking on this uh, the, the path that I have created earlier command click on it turning it into a selection going back to my layers panel and I'm selecting my a new uh, curves adjustment layer and I'm just making it a little bit more contrasty let's say and I think it's much better now this is before uh, we use the curves adjustment uh, layers and this is afterwards and let's see an overall comparison alt click I'm hiding everything but my background layer huge difference and then uh, for the final step all, uh, of course you know that we can go on and make some uh, more uh, adjustments but uh, for the time being I think uh, just for the step, first steps we are fine uh, right now and the final touches are going to be uh, masking her hair and uh, uh, changing the background of our photo and to do that I have already created a path which is called path 1 I'm going to click on it just for you to see as you can see I have uh, created this path to match uh, the form of her uh, body but when I'm on her hair I haven't even tried uh, to select it hair cannot be selected using the pen tool okay I'll show you how we're going to do it though uh, first of all to select hair and uh, not only hair but very difficult uh, areas like uh, grass or uh, trees or things like that the first step we are going to do is find the channel that has the most contrast to the background I'm just clicking on my red channel I can see how I must contrast it has the green channel my blue, my blue channel and I can see that my blue channel is the one that has uh, the most contrast uh, hair and background I will just remember that image uh, menu and go to calculations calculations allow me to blend two channels together uh, but now I'm not going to use two channels I'm just going to use the same channel the blue channel and uh, what I needed to, to do is uh, select for source one of course my photo the layer I need to be the merged uh, layers channel I want it to be the blue one and I'm going to do exactly the same steps for my source 2 selecting merged channel blue and I have this now I need to check this invert uh, checkbox and this is what I get uh, this is an alpha channel I will I can uh, see it here this will be a new channel that would be an alpha channel and alpha channels uh, actually are uh, selection areas uh, they are similar to 
my masks. Mask work also with uh, black and white, but when I use black on the mask, I hide parts of it, and when I use white, I reveal parts of it. Now, uh, the alpha channels are a little bit different because I, when I have uh, white, I do have a selection. When I have uh, black, I do not have a selection. And now my main goal is uh, to try and make her white and the background uh, black because I need to have her selected and the background not selected. Uh, I'm going to go now. I'm just clicking OK in my calculations dialog box and I have my alpha 1 channel. Now, I'm going to use the path that I showed you earlier, path 1, I'm going uh, to convert it into selection by command clicking on it and as you can see now I have a selection and with this selection what I'm going to do is fill with white all the selected areas and to fill I'm going to go to the edit menu fill and use white and ok and then I'm going to inverse the selection to inverse the selection I'm going to the selection uh, menu and inverse now I'm not going to fill again because then I'm going to lose all these areas that I need but what I'm going to do is have this selection as a base for me to paint I'm going to use my brush tool with a black color and I'm going to have a little bit of a hard brush because I need to do this I need to uh, turn these gray pixels that aren't any uh, any close to the hair I need to make them black okay so I'm just painting with black I'm going to uh, as I have this selection I'm just going to do this and this and this And just being careful not to uh, erase or uh, blacken her hair and I'm zooming in right now I won't keep all that hair though I'll just keep some of it so that it doesn't look uh, like it's cut with the scissors okay ah. That's it. Uh, I'm done using my brush tool. Now I'm going to deselect and I'm left with uh, some white areas, some black areas, and some areas that are somewhere in between. What I want to do now is uh, make these areas, the gray uh, pixels of the background, I need to turn them to black. To do that, as I did before, I'm going to use my burn tool. I'm going to choose uh, the range of my tones, which is mid tones. This is uh, closer, closer to the middle gray, and exposure about 30%. And I'm starting to burn. As you can see, most of the hair are uh, a little bit uh, lighter in color and tone, so I do not uh, burn them. This is also a task that uh, it's not difficult 
to be done, but it does need some time and uh, some uh, attention. I should be really, really careful. I don't want to overdo it. I do not want to burn all this hair. It's okay if I burn some of them, but not all of them. As you can see, little by little, I'm making all these gray pixels. I turn them to black so that they won't be included in my selection afterwards. Of course, I'm going to use my dots tool also to to make uh, some of the hair a little bit lighter, trying to keep keep them This area, the small part. I'm going just to paint this with the paint uh, with my brush tool, and now I'm just going to use the dots tool on here, and I'm going to change the range for midtones. I'm going to select highlights also with uh, an exposure about 30% of course the exposure depends on uh, the photo that you have and uh, how much contrast there is you should uh, check it on uh, your own to see how it works and go here and just some finishing touches and now I'll go back to my burn tool and try to make some of these pixels a little bit darker and here and I think I'm okay now now I'm going back uh, to my layers panel and uh, oh sorry forgot I have to I click on my RGB my composite channel to see how my uh, photo release and now uh, what I'm going to do is just create uh, one more composite layer and uh, merging all these layers into one uh, layer on top of every, every other one um, I have uh, my topmost layer selected and again I'm pressing my command Alt, Shift and E keys on my keyboard and uh, let's see what I'm going to do now first of all I'm going to Alt click on the eye of my uh, layer 4 which is my composite la layer I'm going to change the name called Composite 2 because I have another one here and as I said before, I, I'm going to alt click my composite 2 just to have that uh, visible and not all the other ones. And I'm going to use 
my uh, channel, my alpha channel, the one that I created just before. I'm going to use it now. To load this alpha one as a selection, I'm going to the select menu and load selection. On the channel uh, menu, I click on alpha one and click OK. And this is uh, my selection. Now, what I'm going to do is just add a layer mask. That's the result. Let me show you. I'm going to I'm zooming in a little bit for you to see. And of course now I'm not going to leave it uh, this way. I'm going uh, to replace the background with another uh, background. I have here a brick, te a brick uh, texture that I'm going uh, to bring in my photo, I'm going to take it just below my composite too, and that's the result. I think we've done a pretty amazing work. I think everything looks nice. We forgot that. Nah. Can we past 100%? Okay, now we are perfect. So, uh, that will be our uh, webinar. This uh, is how to retouch a portrait using uh, the frequency separation technique, and this is uh, how to mask hair and other difficult areas. I hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please uh, write them. I'll make sure I'll try and answer uh, each and everyone. Okay, thank you for watching.